Welcome to O Health by Dr. T. This is Dr. Marlene Tejas Cordova, and I am here to talk to you about something called German New Medicine. Today on the show, we have Andy Locke Mears. She is a certified whole health educator and German New Medicine teacher and consultant. Welcome, Andy Locke. Thank I'm gonna- you so much. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I recently just learned about this practicing family medicine for the last 23 years, having my private practice and consulting and learning about functional medicine and root cause medicine and evolving my practice. And recently a good friend of mine told me about, turned me on to German new medicine because she knew that I like to get to the root cause (laughs) and disease. And I'm interested very much in the healing process, not keeping things chronic and chronically treated with prescription medications, you know, which we can do a lot of that these days. And so in my own evolution, I noticed, you know, there must be some other ways to help someone heal. And here you are. (laughs) Ta-da. I'm thrilled to be here. (laughs) Thank you so much. Tell us, can you tell us what is German New Medicine? How did you learn about it in your career, your profession? Absolutely. It's, um, it's like, okay, how much time do we have? Right. It's like, I could speak for hours about this. So I'm a holistic health practitioner. I ran a successful wellness center in Maine for many years, and I did all kinds of things with herbalists and nutrition and homeopathy for hormone rejuvenation and all kinds of things. And then I heard in 2009, I, I came across something online that said German New Medicine. I'm like, I've never heard of that. I've been in the holistic health field for over 25 years. So, I mean, and, and truly since the 70s, you know, when I first was interested in nutrition. So I'm not new to this, but I'd never heard of GNM. So I know what you feel. <laughs> And um, so I, I bought the book, I thinking I was so busy with my wellness center, there's no way I could fit in a, yet another training, right? So I bought the book thinking, I'll just read the book, and if I like it, I'll use it, and if not, then I won't. And I bought the book, and it made absolutely no sense, and I couldn't even make heads or tails out of it. It was in English, but it made no sense. So I had it for a full year. And I kept just hearing intuitively, go get trained, go get trained. I didn't even know what it was that I was getting trained in. So I went up to Canada and spent four solid days. In the first 30 minutes of this training, I totally understood how to read the book. It was like a key and a lock. It's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So that was phenomenal. And then I came back on a Monday night, started using it in my clinic on Tuesday morning, barely understanding it, but knowing I've got to learn this. This is amazing. So that's my story with it. Um, From there, I sold my wellness center in 2012 and took this online, was on an international team for three years, and then decided to really focus on teaching versus consulting with it. And that's what I have done for the past three years. I took a year off from my life to develop my courses and launched those three years ago. So that brings us up to here. Yes, now it's interesting you say your intuition kept guiding you towards this uh, approach to medicine, approach to disease, right? Right. My, I find my intuition pulling me towards it as well. I find it fascinating just a little bit that I have uncovered so far. Um, So I really appreciate that now you have created a course for someone like me that I could take and learn. So anyone listening, anybody listening that this sounds interesting to you, please stay tuned, keep listening, because she has developed courses so anybody seeing patients in the healing arts can take this course and learn how to use this approach, right? This philosophy, this information into your own practice, right? Right. I have two courses. So one is for everyone to learn, whether you're a practitioner or not. The other one is for practitioners and it teaches you, you get the first course in that. So you learn GNM and then you learn how to apply it with your clients or patients. Perfect. Great. And they can find that information. Where can they find that information or any information at all about you? 
They can go to my website, andylockmirrors.com. Okay. And they'll, they'll, they'll get a link there to my other website, which is where my programs are. Yeah. Andylockmirrors.com and all the information. And do you have a YouTube channel as well? I do. I do. I think it's Andy Lockmirrors. That. <laughs> it's your name. I think it's my name. <laughs> Very simple. Andy Lockmirrors YouTube yes. channel. Check it out. She has great videos explaining this because sometimes you want to hear it again and go right. back and listen to it again. And nice there's a part, part one, too. The part two. Yep. She has a podcast. So yep. it's it's fascinating to me. That's I'm so happy that you've uh, taken the time to join me to explain more. So so how does this information relevant now in today's world? Well, I guess, why don't I give you the basics of German new medicine? And, yes. that, and then I can answer that question more fully. So it's a, I'm going to start with a story because that's everyone loves a good story, right? Yes. yes. And so this story starts in 1978. And this is a German physician who is traditionally trained. He's in his early 40s, the picture of health. And he gets a phone call one day that his teenage son, Dirk, had been shot accidentally while on vacation. As you can imagine, that's pretty traumatic for any parent to hear. So he and his wife went to Dirk's side, and four months later, his son dies in his arms. I can only fathom what that feels like at that point. So he had obviously went through all the stages of grief, and at at one point, shortly afterwards, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Now he's thinking, right? It's like, okay, I have the shock, and now I have cancer. There's got to be a correlation. Yes. But he's not going to mind, body, spirit like uh, the, others of us might do that. Or scientist. Right. Asking questions, he's, curiosity. He's he, needs, he needs proof. He needs facts, which I get, and I appreciate that. So he started to use that new tool that physicians had. This is now the early 80s. And he looked at CT scans. He took CT scans. He was at the University of Munich at this point, working in the cancer area, in the oncology unit. And he took CT scans of everyone on, on, in the unit. And he realized they all had a circle in their brain. Was it like a targeted room formation in different areas of their brain. He had one as well. Oh, so it would vary? The area of the brain was, was would vary? It would vary. Different okay. areas, different parts of the brain. Some were lower, some were higher, some were in the middle, some were on the right, some were on the left, some were in the middle here. Okay. Okay, so he he's like, okay, what does this mean? And he couldn't figure that out. Nobody could help him. So he started to talk with his patients. Well, what's going on in your life? And they all had a story. Every one of them had had some sort of distress prior to their diagnosis. Right. So then he's right. He's got their medical history now, their history of what's gone on in their life. And now he's got their CT scans. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Very fascinating, right? He's got oh a gosh. correlation. There's a correlation there. Everyone has a shocking emotional right. story, I guess, similar to his. Right, some sort of distressing event, let's call it out, okay? okay? So he starts putting all this information together, and he realized that everyone who had the circle in the same area of the brain had all experienced the same trauma prior to their diagnosis, and they all had the same diagnosis of cancer. Okay. There were no exceptions to this. It was 100%. 100%. So he would find an area of the brain. That same area would always be correlated with a similar story, I guess. Yeah. That area of the brain. Yeah. And then also a same kind of cancer. Yes. So uh, different areas of the brain had a different area of cancer or type of cancer. Sort of. <laughs> sort of, yeah. So so what he discovered, so then he's like, okay, I'm on to something here. You're on because to nothing is 100%. Right? Okay. In modern medicine, nothing is 100%. Okay. If you smoke, will you get lung cancer? Not necessarily. Right. It's, it's true. not 100%. Yeah. Right. So to find something 100% was, was beyond his comprehension almost. So he spent the next few years 
researching every one of the circles in the brain. Oh, there you go. He correlated them to the kind of what he called a conflict shock prior to their diagnosis. Okay. Experience. And then he related it to, well, what's their diagnosis? What, what kind of cancer do they have? And then he went way beyond cancer. He went to everything. He mapped out the entire brain. Okay, so he did do a mapping of the brain in different areas of the brain where he found these circles. Right. And he found them in the different areas. Okay. The map is behind me. It's representative of his research. So he looked at the entire brain. He was able to determine what, uh, what every single circle was correlated to. There you go. So there's the basis. Now the next thing he discovered, well, he discovered five biological laws. Okay. So the first one is that every disease starts with a conflict shock. What okay. he calls the conflict shock, which is a isolated, unexpected event that just catch, it catches you unaware. Right. right? You're not prepared for it. It's like, oh, oh, it's a bit of a shock. It might be a little shock. It might be a great big shock. But it starts with a shock, and instantly a circle appears in your brain instantly. So the second biological law says that every disease runs in two phases as long as the conflict is resolved. So what happens is the moment of the conflict shock, the circle appears in the brain, and it turns on a program in our body because we are hardwired for survival. We have survival mechanisms in us. All living beings do. And so one of three programs begins at the moment of the conflict shock. We are now growing cells somewhere in our body. Our brain knows, okay, to resolve this, we need to make a part of our body larger with more cells to help us cope with this conflict. Amazing. We're losing cells somewhere in our body, which might sound really counterintuitive, but the end result is that that area of the body will be stronger which is what we need so we don't experience this again. Right. The third program that runs is a functional loss. So an organ is under-functioning, which actually helps us in the moment to resolve this conflict. So the first phase, so we have a shock, circles in the brain, a program begins below our level of consciousness. We don't know, oh, I think I just added some cells to my liver last night. We don't have that level of awareness in our body. But it's the fight or flight, what we might consider that that shock happens, and now we enter the nervous system called the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, the stress response. I think most people kind of understand that language. Right. What we know is we're upset, right? We are now running from a saber-toothed tiger. Exactly. So that's what's happening. We know we're upset. There's a really good chance you're conflict active in that moment. Yes, so let's say you lost your job and you're, you're the sole breadwinner of your family and you're just, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to provide for my family? It takes two months until you find another job. In those two months, you're growing cells, losing cells, or losing functioning somewhere in your body. Right. Now you find another job. Okay, your nervous system switches from sympathetic dominant to parasympathetic dominant. It goes from high to the low. So at this point, you enter the second phase of the two phases, and it's called the healing phase. Some people call it the resolution phase. If you grew cells for those two months, your body now says, oh, we don't need them anymore to make that organ stronger to resolve this issue. We've resolved it. So now we can get rid of them. Our body knows exactly how to do that. So our body will start to break those cells down because they're a temporary cell. They don't look like a normal cell. And we'll break them down, and there's pain, swelling, and inflammation with that. If we lost cells for two months, then we have a part of the body that has like microscopic holes in it. So now in the healing phase, we're going to replenish them. We're going to patch in those holes because we're all done making that part of the body weaker. My favorite phase, healing phase. Healing phase. For the game. (laughs) Exactly. If we had a functional loss, let's say your um, hearing was affected, now you will regain it. Perfect. And that's in the healing phase. And the healing phase is what we call being sick. Right. So pain, swelling, inflammation that we have, taking down those extra cells we don't need or replenishing the cells we, we need, 
That's what we call being sick. So many examples of that that I'm sure that you can give. So many examples, even in my own practice. You know, I've had patients that have lost an entire head of hair. Ah, yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, absolutely. Use that as an example, please, because they it's such sure. a shock to them on so many levels. Yes. They receive a shock already, right? And then that happened, but then that in in and of itself is shocking to them to have lost their entire head of hair, right? And now there's another, almost another. another one almost. And that's what we find is they, you can, you can create it. So it just keeps going. And that's something I'll get to in just a minute. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Get, I'll get to the hair in just a minute. What I want to do is finish the second phase. The five. Yes. Yep. So we go through the first phase. So we're replenishing the cells or we're breaking the set down the cells. We don't yes. halfway through this healing phase is the epi crisis. Yes. Because there's swelling, right? If anytime we heal, we always heal in a liquid environment, yes. right? So if you cut yourself, you're going to see it's going to ooze, it's going to be blood, but it's going to ooze, it's going to scab over. So that all we had created extra liquid there. It's red around there. It's inflamed. It's it's there's extra liquid there. Well, we know how to do that internally as well, not just on our skin. So liquid in that in the healing phase pain, swelling, inflammation. When we're done with that, we've gotten rid of all the cells we need to break down, or we've replenished all the holes that need to be replenished. Then we get rid of the liquid. So we push out the liquid in the brain and on the organ level. After that, we go into the second of the two phases in the healing phase. And our glial cells will accumulate in that circle in the brain and patch in the connective tissue around the circle. If you had a CT scan at this point, it would be called a brain tumor. We all have a brain tumor at the end of a common cold. So this is all good, it's all normal, it's part of life. And after that, we get back to our day-night rhythm again, our normal day-night cycle. Our nervous system is back to being balanced. Okay, okay let's look at hair loss. So hair loss is, let's say somebody's losing their hair on their head. It is part of a separation conflict. And it you always look, when you look at separation conflicts, this is a, the epithelial, um, epidermal uh, program. When you look at that, you look at the location. So if somebody has like a rash on their arm or it's hair loss up here, it's like, okay, what touched you that you didn't want touching you? Or maybe you want something touching your head and they, nobody's touching your head. So sometimes if you'd like to have your hair stroked and that's what your spouse did and your spouse died and now you have cell loss in the conflict active phase, you're losing cells, which means your hair can easily come out now because it's not being held in as tightly. Wow, fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you resolve the separation conflict, it will grow right back. And I've had that happen with people. Well, that's wonderful to hear. So this is just a great field of knowledge I, uh, so that we can help heal from things. That, and just understanding, I feel having this deep knowing and understanding of where did this come from even eases the patient. I think instantly, instantly when the patient has an understanding, why is this happening, that already the healing begins. Just the patient understanding. And I find beautiful. What a wonderful practice and approach that we can integrate now integration is is one of my favorite words now i'm trying to integrate all these different modalities and practices and see which one right intuitively i'm guided is going to help this patient heal my right. purpose is to help the patient heal actually return them teach them a lot of education that's why we have this show i find myself education always as a, as a reminder this patient just ha doesn't know like you said Right. They don't teach us in school. They don't teach us this this um, way of looking at our body and understanding the symptoms. Where are they coming right. from? Why am I feeling this? Why, Why am I itchy? Why does this hurt? And things like that. I just love the concept of one day, I'm putting it out there, that one day there's a class in elementary school, middle school, and high school yeah. and that grows along with the child's uh, ability to understand. One day, yeah. I hope. Absolutely. And I think one of the most powerful things we can do is teach this to our children because they can recognize when they're conflict active. Yes. And if they can recognize that, they can have the tools. 
they can develop their own tools to downgrade that. So instead of getting a full-blown cold as the healing phase, they're just going to have the sniffles for an hour. And that's it. I love that. I love that because now they feel empowered. Yes. yes. It's very empowering with your own self, your own life. And what's more important, one of the basic fundamental rights that we have to be healthy yes. to enjoy and be a happy life and live and fulfilling our purpose, feeling great, being able to develop resiliency, right? With right. this knowing. And like you said, downgrade, right? Minimizing, yes. shortening how severe and how long you have an illness or a symptom, right? Exactly. It's a beautiful practice. You said there were five laws. Right, five biological laws, and that's what I really go into in um, in my course. There, it, it's a lot to cover. In the five, is that okay to just name them? I know it's you, yeah. you mentioned two already. The, yep, the third one has to do with germ layers. Okay, germ layers. Right, so we're, you know, in about 17 days after conception, we have three germ layers that all of our organs and tissues develop from. Okay. And, that, and so Dr. Hummer was able to tie in what parts of the brain uh, were that are controlling the different germ layers and the organs that grow from that. So it's a whole tie-in that embryologists really appreciate it. It's fabulous information. The fourth biological law has to do with microbes, which are a hot topic these days. Oh, yes. Yep, and how they are all beneficial to us. We're talking bacterias and TB bacteria included. Average run-of-the-mill bacteria like Staphylococcus or Streptococcus, and also um, viruses um, if they exist. So we know that they all have a beneficial role to play in the body. I like that perspective too, the paradigm shift. Yes. So we're really asking everyone to look at viruses and bacteria in a positive way. Yes. Right? And already, and I think already that puts us at ease that, hey, there's a positive way to look at this. Right. Just kind of planting that seed. Exactly. Open yourself up to learn a different paradigm on how to think and feel about viruses and bacteria. Because already you're setting yourself up for the healing process. Just this exactly. knowing, this, this shift in your perspective, right? Exactly. That's it. Exactly. And it takes a while for people to wrap their heads around that sometimes because the old, what I call the old medicine, which is what we have is modern medicine is pervasive. It's in our advertisements. It's on TV. It's in our media. It's everywhere around us. So we create a GNM community to help us get out of the old way of thinking and into the new way of thinking. Can you tell us more about that in case anyone listening wants to know? You just kind of Google GNM community or is there any other way? That's a great question. I don't know what would happen if you did that. Um, <laughs> just Google it. <laughs> I, I try to create community. Yeah. I try to create community because it's important. And so I started a national organization for that reason. And it, it's called USAGNM.com. You can check it out. It's mainly for practitioners, for those of us in the United States, because we're all, we've all been so isolated. And so I thought, well, there's strength in numbers and there's you know, support and camaraderie. So I started the organization a year ago and it's now um, gone more international. We have an, a chapter of it in Australia as well, which is awesome. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And so we do a, we get together as practitioners on a monthly basis and, and talk, and we have guest speakers in that educate us and everything. But we also have, um, we put on a yearly summit, and that's usually in October or November, and that's free for anyone in the world. So you'd want to get on the mailing list, and so stay updated on all the things. And we try to connect people to the practitioners in their area as well. Really important. Really important. Definitely, yeah. definitely more important. And I can just imagine, I would assume it would go more global and more international, this yeah. concept, right? All the practitioners. Yeah. All. So integrating, again, going back to the word integrating. Um, I'm traditionally trained, board certified in family medicine. I have a holistic approach, mind, body, and soul. And I see a person as a whole, right? And so the story, I love that that Dr. Hammer started to think, you know, and ask these questions. You know, there's a similar story here, exactly. manifesting to disease, right? Yeah. And 
yes. and the, getting the science, getting the research, the proof, correlating it, documenting it so that you, right, right. eventually would learn about it. And now me and all these other uh, practitioners that you have already a part, already practicing it, right? Yeah. There's so many people already practicing it, but I had, I'm, I had not heard of it. So yeah. that's why I love that I just started the show so that we can bring this to light and educate everyone on this topic, German New Medicine. You've gone over the five laws, all the different examples that you could see how the phase is right of like something right. happens, the thinking right. process, the story to correlate, and how a practitioner guides the, the client, the patient, right? right? to an understanding of where this could be traced to, right? In that conversation, right? So honoring still how important it is that there is a relationship of trust. Yeah. Right? And yes. opening up that, that line of communication, how important that is in our roles, um, how humbling it is too, to be a part of that, to, to hold that space for patients to, you know, tell a story that might very much be painful to tell. Exactly. And right. We all, have, we all have a story. So what's really fascinating, yes, when, what's fascinating is when you start to teach this to someone who has symptoms and oftentimes it's like, well, when did these symptoms begin? Oh, they started five years ago. Okay. What was going on in your life five years ago? Oh, my mother died and I was the caregiver. So it's like, Okay, that's super obvious, you know, what the conflict was here. And it's just fascinating. People get it intuitively when they understand, oh, this makes sense. That, makes that incident. Sense. People already know it started when mom died. But right. what does that have to do with it? They don't get the correlation until they learn German new medicine. Perfect. Beautiful. Great explanation. And I know there's more information that... All of you listening can go to her YouTube channel. She explains it beautifully uh, so you gain a better understanding and learn how to apply it in your own health and well-being. Okay, so so how how is this relevant in today's world? Ah, getting back to that question. <laughs> Ooh, and I love it. I love it. So so we have we have COVID-19 out there, which is a virus. And so I did some research on this, and it's in my first pod, um, my first Corona podcast, which I think was my third one that I did. And so what you have to do is when you start to see an epidemic, pandemic, what does that mean? Whether it's everyone in Johnny's class has the measles or everyone in Wuhan, China, lots of people in Wuhan, China are now sick. It's what we call a regional DHS or mass DHS, where a lot of people have the conflict shock at the same time. So Johnny's class couldn't go on the field trip and they were really upset about that. So now they all go into the healing phase of that. Right. And they were looking forward to that field trip. Right. Or, or now that, um, so in Wuhan, China, it doesn't take it's not that hard to figure this out when I went and looked up, well, what went on in their play, in their area? And it was a conflict with the government wanting to put in a, um, um, a com, um, com, not compost, but an incinerator. Right. Um, they are a place that it's 11 million people in Wuhan, China. We're not talking a small town. Their air quality is poor. Their water quality is poor. They already have a lot of health of a lot of health issues because of that. Their bodies are simply weaker. Right. Because they don't get good nutrition, good water, good sunshine. So then the co conflict with the government comes along and there were protests in the streets, 10,000 people protesting. At the same time, a lot of people feeling this. Feeling this, this yeah, they were afraid because they know that having more pollution in their environment was going to deteriorate their health. So it felt like their government didn't care about them, that they were going to put this thing right in the middle of their city. So then that was in July of 2019. And then several months later, they, they resolved it and they went into their healing phase. We started to see that around November, December, which makes sense. So it's only until we see the healing phase that we understand that we know what the conflict was that they experienced. For them, it was the territorial fear conflict, and that impacts a cell loss in the bronchial mucosa. So the, think of your bronchioles that go into your lungs. Cell loss, 
because it's your body is saying, "Uh oh, this is fearful. We need to open up the airways so we can get in more oxygen." That's the right. biological purpose for this program. Right. So there was cell loss for several months. July, August, September, start resolving it, and then later in the fall. And so when they resolved it, they went into their healing phase, and it started. their body started to replenish those. Remember, liquid always, healing always takes place in a liquid environment, so liquid is brought to the bronchioles. Well, that's what we call bronchitis, and it's really hard to die from bronchitis, right? That's not a life-threatening condition. Right. However, when you put the kidney collecting tubule in on top of it, which was feeling abandoned by their government, it started the kidney collecting tubule program, which is cell growth in the conflict after phase. And in the healing phase, those cells are broken down. Anytime you have this program running, when there's another program already running, it's called the syndrome. And everything in the healing phase is more complicated. Our kidney regulate our liquid in our body. And so it will bring more liquid to the healing area. So we've got liquid already in bronchioles. Now we're gonna pile on more liquid and that's what we call pneumonia. It's the territorial fear with an abandonment or isolation conflict. That's what the people have passed from. And of course, more people are susceptible to dying from that if they are older because their bodies don't have the vital energy that we have when our when we're in our 20s and 30s and 40s, right? It's different when you're in your 70s, 80s, 90s. Correct. Or you're a young child, you know. So, how, what can someone do right now? There's a huge amount of fear. I mean, I'm doing telemedicine visits. I'm still continuing to see patients. I'm practicing social distancing in my practice. Everyone's protected. So, most of the visits are online using telemedicine and what I'm noticing I can feel the the uh, the, the language they're speaking the energy behind every word their vibration everything is very fear-based right and, and and I already know that's not helping okay. <laughs> what do you say to that this fear that you're kind of connected with and are and are aware of and speaking you know is not going to help you heal from whatever it is they're complaining about because now also because of this pandemic yeah now also they're in fear mode yeah and now any little symptom any little sore throat any little complaint that they normally would have downgraded right on their own they would have been like oh it's nothing no big deal it's just a cold like now they feed it with fear and could it be COVID-19, do I need to be tested? You know, a little bit of a panicky kind of situation occurs. Can you help us and those listening, please, anyone, or even me, what I can even from this moment on, yeah. you know, or listening to this show right now when they can go to this at any time and sort of integrate this philosophy, these laws or a process maybe that you can help with in this time of fear, great fear behind Every call, every telemedicine visit, there's this underlying fear and every little symptom they're having that they normally would not have reacted to, now they're really reacting to. Right. Right. And that's that's the issue right there, is that this is already a territorial fear issue. <laughs> territorial fear issue. Right. And so this it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And we want to stop that. We want to stop that. That's right. So the, the spreading of this, there's no such thing as spreading because viruses don't, first of all, they don't really exist the way we think they do. They're not what we think they are. We can't catch yes. them. They're not anything that I can get from you or you from me. They are everywhere in our world. We have them throughout our body. They are absolutely a normal part of life and a part of the natural world. They do not hurt us. They might be more active in the healing phase, which is what we would want them to be. And of course, that's when we already have symptoms, but they would help with cell replenishment. So it's not anything to, to fear that something's coming into you. The masks do nothing. <laughs> they do nothing. When you're talking to a patient and there's fear, and there's, like you said, a territorial uh, fear. Yep. yep. What do you say to them? 
Well, I, I teach them GNM. I literally, I find that education is the best way to get out of fear. And then right. what I do in my course that I teach this is that I do a weekly live teleconference because everyone has questions and we need community. So every week we get on together and we talk about this and I can answer their questions and we downgrade the fear. So once you understand GNM, it's really about taking control of your thoughts and your feelings and realizing that I have a choice here. I can feel fear or I can focus on all the positive and good things in my life right now. Yes. And there are. There are many positive Step back things. And understanding that you have you are empowered in your own health and well being. Yes. You can choose to learn more about other areas of medicine that you feel intuitively guided. Right. You, and this possibly may be one of them. If anyone's listening and is intrigued, you know where to find this information, right? So you can better understand yourself and your health and your well-being, yep. right? And so in the language, because there's there's new vocabulary with this, and like you said, you you read the book at first, and you, it was hard to understand, then you took this other course and then you were able to understand it so it's true when I see patients I always feel education is so important a deep a deep understanding of of why they're feeling what they're feeling what are they thinking and how it's all correlated their thoughts their beliefs yes. about, about health or the belief yes. their books written about this yes uh, the biology of belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton and so many other uh, pioneers in the area of mind body medicine. Yes. And of course, Dr. Hammer uh, yes. is a pioneer in this too, in that he found this correlation, asked questions as scientists do and continue the research and continuing to get the data, which is what he did. He got data, he started found correlations, he created the laws, right, to an, an approach, a special approach, right, on how to break it down and get back to the root, the right. root cause. And I want to say um, this is this is information. This is, and it's for you, whoever's listening, to decide whether it's good for you or not and whether you proceed and apply this to your life. Like you said, so much has to do with what you think and what you believe right. to be true. So for now, we want to be safe. If, if, if you're being told to wear a mask for now and you're, and you want to practice, and I practice social distancing. We're wearing a mask in my staff because not everybody has a full understanding of this perspective, right. this this right. belief, this this system, this approach. And so I encourage you, if you are are not there, to go ahead and and do what feels comfortable to you right, right. now. It's important to feel comfortable and at peace. Yes. Yeah. I mitigate. I mitigate the fear as best as I can with my experience and, and my skills and, and meditation and practicing mindfulness and, of course, re teaching them to release the fear and the emotional processing. Of course, we begin, we've got to begin somewhere yeah. and we've got to release the fear. The fear hurts you, makes, perpetuates yeah. the illness and the disease. So please keep that in mind. There's many many different approaches to mitigate the fear, but that is important to keep in mind. Right. And so, and so, um, Andy, how, um, how do people use this to be healthy? Just like, cause I love preventative care. I love wellness, well being. I, I, that's the conversations we have. I like to put attention to, cause I believe what you focus on and put attention to, you get more of. Exactly. And so people point that out. There is a correlation. Right. So how could you apply this just, use it to be healthy and stay well. Exactly. And that's a great question because that's that's why we're all here, right? Is how can we be healthy and how can we use this info? I want to, I just, before I answer that, I just want to mention that, you know, when I go out in public, because I know the information I have, I will sometimes wear a mask and I do it because I know they're afraid. Yes. I don't have a mask on. I could be causing a conflict shock in them. Yeah. It's not me doing it. That's it's compassion. They yes. have the fear of me if I don't have a mask on, even though I know the mask is not doing anything. But I don't want to cause a conflict shock in others. So you can bet yeah. I, I, do, I do all the things that are asked of us because of this mentality of fear that we have, and I right. don't want to make it worse. Correct. Exactly. Very good point. Thank you for that. Yeah. We have to have a compassion, right, for the rest of the world. Right. We do our best 
to mitigate that fear, right? So that's thank, thank you for that. Anywhere that. you can. And that's something I can do that's easy. I can do that. And I don't mind doing that. Yes. Thank you so much. So how do we use this to be healthy? Well, the biggest and best thing that you can do is understand when you're conflict active. Awareness. Awareness, yes. <laughs> active when you are mulling something over. Your boss just yells at you. And, and so for three hours, you're like, oh, I, I just I wish I'd said this. I wish I'd said that. I can't believe I said this to me. You know, you you know that rat race we get into, that hamster wheel we got on. Oh, and ants. ants, automatic negative thoughts. Ants. Yes. Boom, yes. boom, boom, yep. <laughs> and we just we're fixated on it. And then we get home at night and that's all we can do is talk about it and yell at our kids. We yell at our husband and we're still all upset about it. And it's like it, it, it's blown way out of proportion. Well, the larger your conflict active phase, the bigger your healing phase. Good point. Right? So if we can understand, okay, I'm upset. I might be conflict active right now. I'm losing cells somewhere in my body. I might be uh, growing cells somewhere or losing functioning somewhere. Uh, what can I do to downgrade this? I'm going to go talk with my boss and make peace with this. Or I'm going to release, right? Go take a walk, be in nature, deep breaths, which yeah. I teach in the office, deep breathing to reset, right? Reset from that Absolutely. stress response. Absolutely. Peace, peace. Yes. Present moment. Downgrade that sympathetic response. And then I'm going to say that often isn't enough. You then need to take a practical step and totally resolve it. So there's downgrading it, which are all the tools we have. And then there's resolving it, which is usually very practical. So the next day, you know, your boss comes to you. Hey, I'm really sorry for how I showed up yesterday. And right there, it, you're totally at peace. You had already downgraded it 90% and there's the last 10%. Perfect. So in this case... Um, then in this case, the healing phase might be just a few sneezes instead of a full-blown cold. Right. So let me give you the example. This is how you create a cold, all right, the common cold. You're sitting on a public bus. Somebody comes in next to you and sits right down next to you, and they're sneezing, and they've got snot going everywhere, and you can feel their, they're blowing their nose, and you can just feel their germs going all over you, and you're like, ah, oh, they sat right down next to me. I can't believe it. And then a few days later, we're away from that, and we start getting, uh-oh, I think I'm catching a cold. You get that feverish feeling. Your head hurts, and you think, what? I caught it from that person on the bus. When you didn't catch anything, there's nothing to catch. You created a stink conflict. This stinks. This is lousy. I don't want to sit next to me. We started losing cells in our sinuses on the bus. Because of your beliefs. Right. Your sinuses like this. It's yep. contagious. I believe this to be contagious. I believe to be at risk. I'm at risk. Is that a, is that a way of also understanding this? This really isn't about your mind and beliefs. This is about your psyche, which is below your level of consciousness, saying, uh-oh, we're in danger. Okay. And it turns on a program, no matter what our emotion is or what our beliefs are, but those fuel it. They're just not based on it. It's based on how your psyche perceives this, this situation. Perception. Right. Yeah. And so you know yourself. You need to know, I don't like this guy sitting next to me. And so you, if you're upset about it, then you know you're, you're going to have a healing phase, which is what we call a common cold, which is the replenishment of the, the cells in the sinuses. What would, the op what would be the opposite experience of that? Let's say you're sitting on a bus next to someone sneezing and coughing. Yeah. Uh, what is your experience with that situation? My go-to is, oh, this person's in a healing phase. I hope they feel better soon. Then you and your psyche doesn't receive any kind of conflict. No, because I can't understanding. You can't catch somebody else's healing phase. There you go. You cannot catch it. There you so go. it has nothing to do with me unless I make it about me, which I'm not. <laughs> it's interesting. It's like taking the cold personally. <laughs> which is what we do when we have that sympathetic response we're now taking something very personally we are now running from a saber-toothed tiger 
Very important points. Awareness is the first step towards all healing and transformation and education. Yes. And empowered with information and you intuitively guided and what's best for you. That's why the more information, the more we learn and grow with every opportunity, I think that's very healthy, very healthy thing to do. How about diet and exercise? How does this play into German mm-hmm. medicine? I love it because, you know, I'm, I'm a nutritionist. So when I learned g and it's like, mm, what? What do you mean? Because I always thought, well, if I eat healthy, I'll be super healthy, right? And yet how many of us know somebody who's 85 years old who drinks whiskey every day and smokes a cigar every day and, and lives on white bread and spam and they're doing fine at 85? And we all know somebody, uh, let's say a woman in her 40s who eats organic and has a loving husband, a support network, meditates, and is diagnosed with cancer. Right. It is not about diet, folks. Diet cannot prevent a disease. What it can do is when you have a healing phase, the healthier the diet, the more energy you will have to help you get through that healing phase. So if you're eating junk food, your vital energy is going to be lower because you're not getting the energy you need from your food. Can you say that one more time? Yes. (laughs) If you're eating junk food, you're eating junk food, your body will not have the vital energy you will need to make it easily through a healing phase. Very important. It will be more complicated. Yes. And instead of being over within a week or a month, it, it lasts for years. Very important message. Yes. Let that sink in a little bit to everyone listening. <laughs> exactly. About junk food. <laughs> so real food, eat real food and get a variety of real food and your body will have the energy it needs to make it through the healing phase. Perfect. And how about exercise? Same thing, same thing. Get the exercise your body needs so you're you're of a a good weight for your body type and exercise because that's moving your muscles and that's very good and your lymph, also good. It helps to keep you strong. It helps you to have vital energy. That's right. You're creating the environment, right, through your nutrition Mm -hmm. and your physical activity. And now, and now your mind, you're introducing this new information, new approach to your own health and well-being. You're creating these environments that optimize your healing. Yes. And that's what all my shows, I hope, are about. That's my intention and purpose of this platform (laughs) is just educating and bringing to light all these different ways to reach the same thing that we all want, right? Right. Well-being, well-being, and resiliency to get recover quickly and heal from things quickly, right? Right. So we can get on to enjoying our lives. Yes. And living on purpose, fulfilling our purpose, loving, learning. It can be a lot of fun to do this too. It's, 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 that's my belief. It's fun to learn, fun to grow, to know yourself always, right? And these opportunities, I think sometimes when we get sick, it's like, okay, time for me to learn something. Time for me to discover something new about my body and my mind, right? And and seek seek out, you know, with your practitioner um, and things like that. Your health educator, their, your German new medicine teacher. Yeah. You know, now you know what that is, and you want to know more information. We have provided you all the information. Her website and um, all of, and her YouTube channel, Andy Lock Mears. Right? Yeah. Anything you want to say? That sounds great. You know, one thing I want to mention is we haven't talked about conflict relapses, and I'd like to share that information because a lot of people have chronic conditions. Yes, thank you so much. You're right. You know, people, people get the common cold, and we know, okay, if I drink my chicken soup and take my herbs or whatever, it'll be over within a week or two. We know that. And yet, what if it continues, and, and it continues on and on and on, and, and it, pretty soon it's every, it's all the time. Chronic disease, like fibromyalgia, you can name it, chronic fatigue, yep. fibromyalgia, chronic pain, chronic pain, autoimmune, autoimmune diseases, 
MS, ALS, arthritis, anything like that that's chronic, what happens is that whole two-phase cycle that I talked about gets interrupted. And so you're conflict active, and then you're growing cells, losing cells, losing functioning. Then you resolve it. Now you go into the healing phase, but that healing phase gets interrupted with another conflict. So you go back to the beginning, cell loss, cell growth, functional loss, make it through that one, head into the healing phase again when symptoms get worse, that gets interrupted and now you're back to the beginning. This can happen over and over and over again and that is what anything chronic is. So it's a conflict relapse. We call it a hanging healing. Say that again one more time. We call it a hanging healing. That the okay. healing phase cannot be completed. Okay. Yeah. Very important. Thank you for bringing that up because chronic illnesses and diseases are, are on the rise. They're on the rise and anything that can help uh, anyone with those labels and those diagnoses right. and, that, and really living that and suffering. Right. This is great information, something that you, anyone that feels they've exhausted all uh, different uh, treatment modalities, uh, look into German New Medicine uh, for, your, for your healing and for your understanding of what you're experiencing. And this is really where the the interpersonal growth comes from because you then have to find out what's your track. What is it that's keeping you stuck? It's a journey. It's a journey. It is. It's a journey. And just know that you're not alone, that Andy and myself are here. We are colleagues now. Yes. We're going to continue to collaborate, right, and do our best to be here for you, right? in a place of, of the purpose of helping you heal and understand what you're going through. Right. Exactly. So thank you so much for what you do. Thank and all you. That you are doing. Okay. And I thank you for joining me on O oh Health by Dr. T. So that sums it up. German new medicine. I hope you have gained a better understanding of what German new medicine is. I find it very helpful to see further into this subject if you are wondering all the different ways that maybe you can heal something you have had trouble healing with traditional medicine. I am a traditional practicing physician, traditionally trained. I have a practice and we integrate all the different philosophies different information, science-driven, research-driven information. This is all, and whatever I will present to you, whatever I will integrate into my practice is what I am presenting to you. I believe there are different and different approaches to achieving health and well-being. And German New Medicine is something I wanted all of you to know more about. And I wanted to also provide to you a better understanding of root causes to all illness and disease. There is a way to understand your symptoms, your diagnoses, and there are ways to get to the root of it. And German New Medicine is a possible way that can help you achieve better health and well-being. Again, my practice has a unique approach. It integrates all the different types of modalities to achieve healing. Traditional medicine, integrating German new medicine, functional medicine, uh, referring to acupuncturists, energy healers, nutritionists, and all these many other modalities in order to achieve your true healing. Know that it is possible to heal from anything. We just have to get the right approach. At OHealth by Dr. T, you can come visit us and visit our website, ohealthnow.com. And in our conversation, in getting to know you and seeing you as a whole, we can create the right plan for you to achieve optimal health and well-being. Thank you so much for joining us.